factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Hey, this is Brandon from Budget Boosting. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to replace your uh, master slave cylinder. Um, these typically go bad if you get a leak in your car or this rubber seal sometimes um, just blows. And what happens is you'll go to push on, push on your clutch pedal and there'll be nothing there. And so sometimes this is the cause. There'll be other causes, but we'll cover this one today. And um, uh, what you do to remove it, if you look here, you have a, um, it's kind of hard to see, but you've got a, um, it's the, it's the actual braided line, well, steel line, that goes to the slave cylinder. And um, so it's always easy to take this off first, so before you loosen anything, because sometimes it's on there really tight, and it's really hard to get off unless it's mounted to something. They make actual wrenches to take these lines off, but uh, I don't own any, so you can just usually use a 10 millimeter. Um, that's what I've always used, and it's just... Lefty loosey, righty tidy. I always put um, some liquid wrench on there first. Always usually makes makes it a bit easier. And then you just there we go. And usually this takes a bit to unscrew. Each car is a little different. Now keep in mind this is pretty easy to access. However, on a front wheel drive, it's probably not. And then you'll see the line just pop out kind of like that. And you can just kind of push this off to the side um, and kind of get it out of the way. Now some of these sometimes have two bolts, four bolts, it's just whatever, how many bolts hold it on to the uh, actual firewall. In this case there's two bolts, one upper, one lower. It's kind of hard to see, um, but there's just two bolts, hold it right under the firewall. So sometimes you have to use a wrench, sometimes you get a socket. It varies by car. Alright, so I undid the two nuts that hold the actual master slave cylinder on the firewall. You can kind of give it a little tug and just get it loose. Now keep in mind, this component, I'll get another one out here, right here, this is actually attached to your clutch pedal. So in order to remove this unit, we're going to have to remove the little, it's like a little pin that sits in there. So we're going to go under the car and I'll show you exactly how to uh, remove that so that this whole assembly can come right out. Okay, now now that we're under the car, it's very hard to see and get a camera in here. But there's those two holes I showed you on the slave cylinder. Now there's a pin that connects to your pedal. It's very hard to see, but all you do is there's it's like a little cotter pin. So you basically just pull that out with a pair of needle nose pliers. You basically just pop the pin right out, and then you're going to just take it out um, on top of the car. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, take that uh, cotter pin out and then I'll meet you on top of the car. All right, I got the uh, cotter pin assembly out from underneath the car and basically here's the two pieces. They're a lot easier to see out of the car. Now you have your clutch pedal which fits exactly in between this and then the pin goes just right through it and then there's a little hole for your cotter pin which is right here. And then you basically just, it's a little stiff and you just push it in, and there you go. So while you're under the car, you've got to get needle nose up in there and pull that out, and then pull the pin out, and then, hopefully this should come right out of the firewall. Yep, like the chain. Nice and easy, and you can tell just how not, 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 not good. It's so... Finished. Yeah, it's, it, it's done. So, before I always put in a new one, I like to, uh, what I call, prime it. Let's start by doing that. And basically, most clutch master cylinders use just DOT3 brake fluid. Um, maybe they're different on different cars. Um, almost all of them use DOT3. You can always just check online or in your maintenance manual. So what I do is I pour a little bit in here. Let me open this, it's a brand new container. And I pour just a, just a little bit in here, about halfway. 
And I like to prime it, which just basically you just push it in. And I don't know if you can see it from where you're looking, but I put a little bit in there and I'll just, just push in. I'm trying to do this without. And there we go. And you can see a little bit starting to leak out from there. That's good. That means it's got brake fluid and pressure all the way through it. And also, this is how you adjust um, your, your throw on your clutch pedal. So let's say, for instance, you have to go almost all the way to the floor to even engage first gear. That means you're too far screwed in. Now, if your engagement point's way too high, you can. Um, that would mean it's way too far this way. It'd be way too far out. So if you if you like where your clutch is at right now, just get your old one and align it to exactly where that one is at. But if you want um, your engagement point to be lower, screw it in more. If you want your engagement point to be higher, screw it out. Just like that. So I, I think for this car, it's exactly where I want it. So it seems to be about three or four threads in. And then, so I'm gonna wanna align it like it'll align with my pedal. And then this is just a jam nut right here. So you kinda just get this as far forward as you can. And you get a, you can, you just hold this piece and you can get the right wrench. It's probably like a 14. And literally just, yeah, it's a 14. And then we're holding this just tighten it right there. That's just so nothing will slip. And then after you're done with that, um, we're gonna just align this. It's almost easier for this part if you have two people. One person will kind of feed it to you while you're under the car feeding this to the, uh, the pedal. So that's probably what we'll do here. So to start, you kind of just put this back in. And I'll go get under the car again here and I'll have uh, Mad Matt from Budget Boost in here kind of feed it to me and align it to me. Feed the hungry beast. All right, so I just got finished attaching it to the clutch pedal. Now it's pretty easy from here. All you gotta do is get your two, your two uh, nuts that you took off from the firewall. And I mean, all you're gonna do is get it on there. And um, I won't actually do it for the sake of time. But just, all you do is just uh, thread them on there, get it real nice and tight. And then, um, sometimes you have to uh, bleed your clutch, sometimes you get lucky and you don't have to. Um, we'll cover how to bleed it in the next video when we actually replace the, uh, uh, the actual slave cylinder for the clutch fork. And we'll cover that then. But as far as this goes, um, thank you for watching. Um, if you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to our channel. And we do have new budget boosting window stickers, which you'll see on the screen right now. Um, those will be up maybe oh, two weeks or three weeks. We'll have our first shipment. And we'll put them on eBay buy now auction for $20 free shipping. So other than that, remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. On fuel injection, you have a high pressure fuel injection pump, which has to have high pressure because as soon as the fuel injection pintle opens, high pressurized fuel needs to make a nice spray for awesome fuel atomization. Whereas a carburetor needs about seven pounds of fuel pressure, but a adequate volume to fill the carburetor's bowls. And when the fuel pressure seven pounds hits the carburetor, it just needs to go through a jet, the fuel bowls, enough to give you enough fuel you need. So what you need is about seven to nine pounds of fuel pressure, but a decent volume, like anywhere from about 98, 99, 